every year you are just given a deluge of mock drafts and it's hard to sift through them. I only do two. I do one this week and I do one the week of the draft and I like to think my intel is pretty good and it's a lot stronger than what it would have been a month ago or even a couple weeks ago before free agency. So using my trusted phone and texting everyone relentlessly until they said, just please stop annoying me with your mock draft questions. It doesn't matter. I have now put together a mock draft list for the week of April 6th. Let's go through it here. Number one, I've got Trevor Lawrence, but then it gets a little interesting from here. See Wilson, I go Mac Jones three. We'll talk about it, I'm sure, every day leading up to the draft, but I think the hype is real and the buzz is real and it's not just a smoke screen. I think Mac Jones three. Then four, we'll get to what they have to give up. I think the Patriots take their swing. Justin Fields, four to the Patriots. Bengals with Kyle Pitts and, and Sewell and Slater on the board, Jamar Chase at five. Wow. And the Dolphins, they don't go with a pass catcher, which everyone thinks they're gonna do. I go with going a tackle, Rashawn Slater. Then I got another trade. The Cardinals, who've been the most aggressive team in the NFL this entire offseason, swing again, trade up with Detroit, and get Kyle Pitts as he slips. Then I go Sewell. Then I go the Broncos sitting pretty, and Trey Lance falls into their lap. Then Patrick Sertain. But we're not just doing the top 10. Let's quickly go through all of the teams so you know who your squad's getting. 11, I got the Giants going Jalen Waddle. Uh, not passing on Jalen Waddle, taking Mika, Micah Parsons, and then the Eagles going receiver, receiver in back to back years. Jalen Rager last year, Jalen Waddle this year. The Jalen. And their quarterback's name is Jalen. Let's go. Jalen. Uh, the Falcons, they <laughs> trade back with the Patriots. They get a linebacker. And then the Lions trade all the way back with the Cardinals, and they still get Devontae Smith there. I go Najee Harris to the Dolphins. So their two picks in the first round would be Slater, the tackle, and Najee Harris, a running back. Interesting, no pass catchers. Let's keep going here. 19, Trevon Morig, the safety out of TCU, goes to Ron Rivera's defense there. Then the Bears, everyone thinking quarterback, quarterback. They get another wide receiver, Kadarius Toney, tough kid out of Florida. Then the aforementioned J.C. Horn to the Colts, Jalen Phillips to the Titans, Jets with their second pick. Five foot seven wide receiver, Rondell Moore out of Purdue. Steelers, they go with the center, Landon Dickerson. We go defense, we go defense, and let's finish it up with 27 to 32. I think 32 might be the most interesting one here, guys. The Buccaneers, with the last pick in the first round, they go and take oh. a quarterback, Davis Mills okay. out of Stanford. Hmm. Developmental quarterback like under Tom Brady that maybe they can groom and maybe pass the torch to. But those are my top 32. Let's go back to the top 10 really quickly and I'm gonna ask a couple questions to my awesome hosts here to get their opinions. But that's the top 10. That's how I have it. Let, let it soak in a little bit. I know if you're a Dolphins fan, you're throwing the remote right now saying, Kyle Pitts and, and, and Waddle and all these guys are on the board and we're taking Rashawn Slater. Yeah, I think they take a, a, a tackle to protect Tua. Kyle, I will start with you. The biggest eye-popping move right there is a Patriots logo at number four. Here is the hypothetical trade that my brain has mustered up. Justin Fields for the 15th overall pick, a, the second round pick this year, a first round pick next year, and a third round pick next year. It's a haul, but it's not crazy if you're the Patriots. What do you think, Kyle? New England finally doing it, going up and getting the quarterback of their future. It's not crazy, but you are, Peter. And we say this every spring. I want to make sure everybody at home knows. There are many mock drafts. Many of them, I'm sure, are great and will be turning out right. We believe in the Schrager mock draft. Why? Because most mock drafts are made by people watching film and scouting, and they become who they think the teams should take. Peters is based purely on contacts. He does not watch film, and his mock draft is based on who he thinks they will take. That said, Peter, you're a wild one for this one. I like it. I'm absolutely intoxicated by the idea of the Patriots moving up that far. The Justin Fields, Cam Newton quarterback room is really something to marvel at. Cam becoming a, a mentor is something that he could embrace. Um, I'm into this. I do not want them to enter the, this season with just Cam Newton. And having this big, strong athlete from the Big Ten would be incredible. But Peter, it's your pick. It's not mine. 
So when McDaniels told you they're going to move up to take Fields, was it FaceTime or text? It wasn't McDaniels, it was Steve Belichick, it was his son. Um, no, in truth, there's a big feeling around the league that this one is going to be the year because the Patriots never draft this high and they finally have this 15th pick, but they're still not high enough to get a quarterback. So if not now, when, right? So they had all this free agent acquisitions. They get, say they're eight and eight, say they're nine and seven, say they're 10 and six, they're not going to have the draft ammunition to move up to four. This might be the year, and four might be the team. Atlanta, they might not be drafting quarterback. They might look to load up on picks for the future years. I think it makes a lot of sense. New England has been nothing short of very aggressive this offseason. This would fit the bill. Now, Kay, it's not the only trade I have. Yes. You have been very high and have been enjoying the Kyle Pitts hype train of late. I've got the Arizona Cardinals, another aggressive team, Trading up to get Wild. Kyle Pitts at seven. Here's what it would be. The 16th overall pick, next year's first, and a 2022 third. But Kay, I ask you, do you think after all this buzz, if he can go second overall, he can go third, he can go fourth, do you think it's yeah. possible that this Kyle Pitts can slip to seventh? And do you like the fit in Arizona as opposed to maybe Cincinnati or Miami? Of course, if I'm a, a Cardinals fan waking up and seeing this mock draft over at NFL.com slash Schrager, and you should go there, and thank you for all the hard work on this, Peter, you're like, yeah, giddy up, you're throwing confetti, you're doing the Rod Tidwell Arizona Cardinals touchdown dance in your living room this morning, because of course you want this game-changing talent, this 6'6 absolute stud. I'll say this, Schrager, if I'm the Bengals, I'm not taking a tackle at five. I'm taking pits. I know and I get what you're saying. Burrow and Chase, they got history. We get it. This draft, though, is so deep with receiver talent, it simply comes to supply and demand for me. I'll say it again. There's about five or six really good wide receivers, and, there, and then there's this guy that we're watching. Just keep, keep going with the highlights. Yes, the touchdown dances, all of that. I don't think you can make the case, Shregs. That you can, t I don't think any of these pass catchers should go ahead of Kyle Pitts, and I think that it would be a crime to do so. So, as good as the connection might be between Chase and Burrow, I could not do that. Uh, they have a number one guy. His name's T. Higgins. He almost had a thousand yards. He had three different quarterbacks throwing him the ball last year. Uh, they've got Tyler Boyd. He's coming off a season with some injuries. He had 2,000 yard seasons back to back in 2018 and 2019. I don't know that they need a wide receiver for Burrow. If they're not going to protect him, they should grab Pitts there. At five, that's what I would do, Peter. I'm disappointed that he slipped, but it's go a Cardinals. great take, and I think Dolphins fans would be losing their minds if both yeah. Kyle Pitts and uh, Jalen Waddle were on the board and they took a tackle instead. But the Dolphins, they they do things a little differently sometimes. I think they want to protect their quarterback, D'Angelo. I'm going to end with you. Let's just look at the quarterbacks that are taken in my mock draft, and I'm so curious because I we've had you on the show for a few days, but you haven't really weighed in on how you order these guys. When it's all said and done, do you really think your former, I guess, coach, I mean, he was the offensive coordinator when you were in Washington, do you really think Kyle Shanahan could take Mac Jones over Justin Fields and Trey Lance? You know what, Peter? When I sit back and I think about this Kyle Shanahan <laughs> offense, um, you know, I think you can be successful with either guy. Now, I wouldn't necessarily want Mac Jones just because in the National Football League, in a league that as a, as a quarterback, you're going to get unwanted pressure from time to time. I want a guy who has a little bit more escapability uh, than Mac Jones. Um, you know, he's made he, he, he made every throw. He did everything that was asked of him in Alabama. But man, was he surrounded by some dogs. I mean, he had the best players at almost every position on the football field. I mean, we'll see that come out in the draft with all those guys from Alabama that get drafted. But, um, you know, Mac Jones just didn't impress me with arm talent. Um, you know, I, like I said, I want a guy who's a little bit more mobile, especially in this offense. He's going to have a great run game to lean on. You want a guy who can move the pocket on some of those play action passes, get outside the pocket, uh, you know, utilize that big arm, take some of those shots downfield. Um, you know, I think there's better options than Mac Jones, but I understand what they're thinking. I love Justin Fields um, to watch him get beat up in, you know, in, in, in those uh, playoff games and, and, and just rise to the occasion. Um, I mean, it was nothing short of just remarkable to watch that kid go get beat up and still, you know, 
throw pinpoint passes, understand that pressure's coming at him, just the poise in the pocket. So, um, you know, not necessarily the guy I would pick in Mac Jones, but I understand and I think he'll have a chance to be successful. All right, Kyle, I know you're chomping out the bit to ask me a question. What do you got, bud? Yeah. <laughs> well, we, we love this. And, and Kay and I especially, we go through this every year with you. It's exciting for us. And I know these yeah. are like your 32 babies. And, Peter, you went through 76 iced teas and iced coffees trying to make this thing happen. So my question, take the first couple off the list, the Lawrence and Wilson, all that. Peter, of the 32 picks, like, which one, when you wrote it down, were you like, I love this one. I, I, this is my favorite one. I think this is going to happen. But also, I just really love the matchup. Which one was it? Yeah, you know, I think it's the Jets' second pick, this Rondale Moore, who is not getting any hype on our network. Yes! Or on ESPN. He's a wide receiver out of Purdue. He's five foot seven. He's a bulldog. He plays wide receiver. Rondale Moore, and I'm telling you, this is the type of guy that is maybe the next wave of wide receiver in this league. Everyone wants the Tyreek Hill speed. Everyone wants to see what, what the 49ers did with Debo Samuel, where he plays running back and wide receiver and does everything. That's the next mold for these wideouts and how they can separate. Because to Kay's point, there are so many good wide receivers coming out of college every year. And if you take one in the top five, Next year, there's going to be another guy in the top five. So how are you going to separate yourself? Rondell Moore is a unicorn in this draft, and I think he is one of those interesting players that could fall into the first round or be taken in the first round, and every one of the draft Knicks and the mock draft guys are like, wait, who? Rondell Moore out of Purdue. He's not being yeah. talked about nearly enough.